Oh, good morning, everyone. Hope you can all hear me. Currently, uh, oh, 70, 60, 70 hounds in the pack. Uh, puppies, uh, male and female, it's a mixed pack, and different types of hounds. What you're seeing in the in the pack uh, in front of you right now is a uh, is a mix, an example of a mix of types of hounds. So the one that uh, you probably noticed straight away is the shaggy one. The shaggy one is a Welsh hound. Uh, these are bred to hunt the mountains of Wales, and scenting conditions there can be quite difficult. And so what we're trying out is a Welsh hound to see how he hunts in California under our scenting conditions. The rest of the pack is uh, is mostly Old English foxhounds, and that's really what uh, most of the pack is. They tend to be tricolour, although you'll see some of what we call limestone colour, just the the, the uh, white or beige colour. But, but the classic uh, foxhound is this uh, tricolour hound. Uh, they're probably about uh, 70, 80 pounds, most of these hounds, uh, in weight. And you notice that again, there's a mix of male and female hounds here in the in this pack. Uh, we also have some American hounds. Now the American hound is lighter than the Old English uh, foxhound, and is used often for, for hunting coyote. And uh, it's coyote that is the prey most of the west of the Mississippi. So east of Mississippi, it's mostly fox. West of Mississippi, it's largely coyote. And so the lighter American hound is, tends to be better over uh, longer terrain, longer running, uh, which you get with a coyote. So these are our hounds, and uh, Matthew Cook is our huntsman, you see him here on the grey horse. And one is to, to uh, keep the pack together, so you might often get an errant hound that will chase a scent that we don't want them to chase, a deer or a, uh, a rabbit or a bobcat or a cougar, or some scent that we don't want them to chase. And so we'll pull them back onto the main line, and that's what the whipperin's primary job is. And the other is as they move wide of the field and ahead of the field, they often see game, and so part of their role is to point the game out uh, to the, the huntsman. Now, a lot of terms that are used in hunting are uh, go back to uh, Norman French. So, for instance, you've heard the term, I'm sure, tally-ho. That originates from the, from the Norman French expression, il est ho, he is up. And it's used when you see a, a, a fox. And so a lot of the terms that we use do come from that, that kind of origin. So uh, usually in a, in a typical hunt, you've got uh, Matthew out front uh, guiding the hounds, and he guides the hounds with his horn, and then he directs the whips to, uh, to keep the pack together. And then he will cast the hounds when, he's, when they're ready to hunt. And today, we didn't cast the hounds. We were controlling the hounds all the way around, so Matthew never asked them to hunt. And at some point when we're out hunting, he will cast them, he will ask them to hunt, and he will send them into a cover. And a cover is uh, uh, usually a treed area, often with a creek or water supply, uh, and that's usually where the game will be. And he'll cast the hounds into the cover, and he'll ask them to hunt. And he'll let them hunt in that, and when they pick up a scent, one of the hounds will start talking on the scent. Um, they will basically speak, they'll bark, or they'll, they'll uh, you know, make some noise that they indicate they've found the scent. And that's the way they communicate to each other. And then all of the pack will converge on that one lead hound that's found the scent and they'll all chase that, that lead hound. And you might only chase them for 100 yards, that scent, or it could be several miles. And the sport of fox hunting largely is the riders behind the field, led by a field master. And I was the field master today of this field that was chasing, so I was the front rider. I'm setting the pace and the distance from the hounds. And it's our job to basically keep in contact with them, stay in touch. So we don't be too far behind, we don't want to be too close, uh, we, uh, because the hounds may double back on a scent and come that way. So that's uh, you know, part of the challenge, is basically uh, ensuring that you're distanced from the, from the field, and also making sure that my riders that are with me are all safe and sound, and we haven't lost anybody, there's been an injury, and so on. Um, so we, we form the first field, and typically we talk about the first field being the field that jumps. So the first field is jumping all the fences, for those of you who are interested in our riders, we also have a second field that doesn't jump, uh, but follows us and goes through gates. And sometimes we also form a third field, which is basically just a walk trot field. We'll um, often lose the field, but they'll catch up with us when we when we draw the hounds back and take it at what we call a check. Uh, so that's kind of the process of hunting. And normally when we're riding, we're out for about two hours. So the, the, the process of a hunt is two hours, but it can be four hours long. We hunt all around the Bay Area. We hunt uh, 
in um, uh, down in Holston, near Holston, a couple of ranches down there. Uh, we hunt up in the out in the Gold Country, southeast of Sacramento, near Rancho Marietta. Uh, we hunt up in Marin and Sonoma. Um, we even drag hunt out here occasionally on this property too. And then when we say drag hunt, that means we lay a scent, and then we chase the scent. The hounds chase the scent. That's called drag hunting. Uh, when you see us all dressed like this, you might think we're in drag, but uh, <laughs> that's drag hunting is laying a scent. Now I'm padding time while I'm waiting for the minister to arrive, so as soon as she arrives, we'll start the blessing. We got here a little bit early. Um, so we, uh, let's tell, see what else I can tell you. So we, um, the jumps that we jump, we'd like to jump coops, and you may see one just in that trees over there. That's what we jumped as we came over there. It's a solid wood fence. And it usually goes in a fence line. Uh, we, we put the fence line in order to let us through the fence line, but still keep keep uh, livestock inside the field. So we'll be jumping into fields and out of fields. And in, in general terms, that's the sport that we have. Now this club has about a 120 members. Uh, we probably have about 40 to 50 active riding members, but we have social club members as well. And we run a lot of social events. So if one of them that we're running this year, for instance, well, you're at one right now, of course, which is a fundraiser to raise money to feed the hounds uh, over the year. But we do a hunt ball, which is a, a nice affair. We're doing it at Menlo Country Club uh, this this uh, December 22nd. Uh, it's open to anybody who'd like to come. It's a nice formal affair. Um, it's a nice formal affair. Uh, we, uh, the, the people with their colors, and you'll notice that uh, all the field riders here actually have their colors. And the men wear red and the, and the women wear black with the green piping around the blue velvet collar. Um, when we have a whip, as the one right in here, uh, they will often wear red as well. So the whips, the staff, will wear the, the red, 